Hello and welcome back to The Wisdom of Odin. Today we are in Mittenwald in Germany, right on the border of Austria and the Bavarian Alps. So really exciting video for you today. I'm going to be talking about a subject that has to do a little bit with the name of this city. So Mittenwald literally means the middle of the forest. And so then you have Midgard, which just kind of means us, this realm. And it could also mean, you know, the enclosure, the middle enclosure. And there's a lot of different things here. So we're going to be talking about Midgard in general, what it means historically, what we know from the sources, but also what does it mean to live here now? Uh, and maybe some modern, more contemporary interpretations of what Midgard is. So I hope you enjoy this video, this beautiful hike, and of course, the views of the German Alps. It is circular around the edge, and around it lies the deep sea. And along the shore of the sea, they gave the lands to live into the race of giants. But on the earth, on the inner side, they made a fortification around the world against the hostility of giants. And for this fortification, they used the giant Ymir's eyelashes, and they called the fortification Midgard. But Odin and his brothers created the earth. It was they who made Midgard. So those two quotes I just put for you here at the very beginning of this uh, this section are talking about the Poetic Edda and the Prose Edda on the description of what Midgard is. Now many of us probably know that Midgard was created from the flesh of Ymir, uh, from the bones of Ymir by Odin and his brothers. Uh, but the thing that gets a little complicated is in the Poetic Edda, and specifically the Voluspa, it doesn't give us a lot of details on how this happened. Uh, it just said Midgard was made. Midgard was made by Odin and his brothers. Uh, whereas in the Prose Edda, it kind of shows there's a difference between Midgard and Earth. And if, then we, if we actually take that in the Prose Edda and then look in the Poetic Edda again, you see that they're actually given separate lines. Earth is mentioned one line, and then the next line, we have Midgard that is mentioned. And so this kind of made me start to think, what if Earth and Midgard are separate? Um, especially with that line saying that Midgard was um, a, an enclosure around Earth, was an enclosure to protect us from the Jotnar. So, I know it's very common knowledge, like if you ask any Norse pagan for the most part, they're going to tell you, like, at least I think they are, they're going to tell you that Midgard is here, Midgard is where we live. But it may very well be that Midgard is an enclosure around where humans live to protect us from something on the outside. And I, I kind of started getting into this when I talked about the nine realms of Norse mythology, uh, because it seems like the nine realms, we've kind of just assumed and placed things where we thought they made sense. And it kind of seems like that for Midgard as well, is it just kind of became assumed that Midgard was without a doubt the question that is Earth. But you know, Jord or Jord is the goddess of the Earth and, and not the goddess of Midgard. So it does seem to be that Midgard and Earth, or Yorth, is something different, are two different ideas. Um, so again, this is, you know, something I'm kind of presenting in this video. Uh, you know, I'm not saying definitively, but I do think there's evidence to, just, to, to suggest they are different things. Um, definitely let me know down below what you think of this. Um, I don't know quite what I think of it looking at these, these small pieces of evidence. Um, but if I was to remove all knowledge I had of Norse mythology and just read these two lines, it kind of seems like Midgard is different than Earth. Now, again, I don't know how this is going to change your personal practice um, in your life now. I don't know if it is earth-shattering news. It definitely isn't. Midgard-shattering news. It definitely isn't. Uh, but really, with these videos, I want to just make you think. I want to make you think differently about this faith. I want to make you think differently about Norse mythology in general, because I think we've been kind of led to believe that there's things that you just don't question, um, that Midgard is just here where we live. But I don't think that's actually true. I think there is another layer to this, um, and maybe it's just different per culture. Like if you talk to Germanic people versus Scandinavian people or Norwegian versus Swedish, um, maybe there's just different interpretations and it changed when it was written down. Now, the next thing I kind of want to talk about, but we're going to go down the trail a little bit here, um, is to talk about the actual like name of Midgard and what Midgard means um, and kind of how that gives us something to go off of as well. And again, something that I think actually supports my argument here that Midgard Guard is something that is separate from Earth and Yord itself. All right, so let's get down the trail and continue to see this, this beautiful, beautiful day. How do you say waterfall in German? A wasserfall. Wasserfall. 
Das ist ein Wasserfall. Sehr gut. Okay, it took me a long time to get up to this spot, so I hope you enjoyed all the beautiful views coming up to here. Um, so that waterfall was absolutely incredible, but very loud, so I really couldn't film there. Uh, but look at this spot right here. Doesn't this, I mean, this is like a fairy tale. You have the mountains in the distance, a little path that comes down the stream as well. Hello. All right, so back to this today's topic. So as far as the name and where the name comes from, so there's actually a lot of history behind the name of Midgard. Um, now its origins seem to be directly related to the Old Norse and all the origins point back there. Uh, but there's been a lot of transformations over the years, um, including uh, Manaheim, so the realm of man has been used as well. Shoot. Loki, go away. Shoot. So the realm of man has been used as well in several different poems that I could find. Uh, and then the most known one probably is Middle Earth. So Middle Realm, Middle Earth. Uh, and that comes from an old English poem. Um, and that's actually where Tolkien got his inspiration to name his world's Middle Earth. So it's kind of this trickling stream where, you know, Midgard was up here and it's kind of traveled down to several different terms and several different languages. But Midgard is the origin. Um, now again, from everything I could tell, it just means enclosure, enclosing something. Now I have to admit, I'm not the biggest on learning all the different naming histories, but I figured I would throw it in here so you understand that the origin of it was Old Norse and then it's changed throughout history. Um, so I don't know how much that gives you, but I wanted to make sure I presented that as well because this is another one of those subjects where we don't have a lot of information. So I feel like the more I'm able to kind of give you here to help you interpret this your own way, because that's again why I want these videos to exist. I want them to, to give you the information or to get you started seeking the information so you can come to your own conclusions. So I do want to kind of talk about my interpretations of Midgard and how I've come to understand it at least here. And I do have a have them all quote that actually uh, really encompasses what Midgard is. Uh, and then we'll explore that. And then I have another fun interpretation that I want to share specifically to Germany. Uh, so a few more things here, but I want to travel further up the trail and see what awaits us. Wanted to take a brief pause in the middle of this video to let you know if you're enjoying it, it would mean a lot if you liked and subscribed and all that good stuff. There has been so much misadventure to get here to Mittenwald um, because there was sadly a train accident uh, that kind of derailed a lot of the stuff around here. And so we had to take a train, we had to take a bus, and then another bus, and then wait somewhere, and then finally get here, and we're gonna have to do the same to get out of here. Um, and I really just wanted to come here to film this video. Obviously, it's absolutely gorgeous, but really, Mittenwald and Midgard just came together so well, and I had to film it here. Uh, so if you appreciate the work I put into this content and taking you around Europe to show you uh, you know all the beautiful places here and to talk about paganism and pagan subjects please think about supporting this channel on patreon it would mean so very much this is a one-man band for the most part and so this is really how I continue to make this content uh, and bring these beautiful locations to you so thank you so very much even if you're able just to like and subscribe and all that boring youtuber stuff that I hate saying most of the time uh, but truly uh, I am so thankful for this beautiful journey I'm on and it's all because of you amazing people out there that support this channel in any way. But with that, let us get back to this video and this discussion on Midgard. Better to be alive, no matter what, than dead. Only the living enjoy anything. Is this not a perfect place to talk about Midgard? I really want to talk about that quote here because that's really the reason I wanted to record this. I mean, of course I have to share the history, but this is the main reason. So this quote I've heard in different ways. One way I've heard it um, is that you can only enjoy life's Midgard's pleasures while you're alive, um, that you should choose to be alive. Uh, and, and that's, again, really what I want to talk about here. So Midgard to me is a representation of balance because we have so many extremes here. We have extreme heat, we have extreme cold. We have high mountains, yet we have canyons at the same time. 
literally like mountains concaved into the earth. Um, we have oceans, we have lush fields, we have deserts, um, we have good, we have evil, we have death, we have life. The reason I think Midgard exists, I re the reason I think Midgard was created is because it acts as almost a keystone for the realms. It acts as a, as a balancing anchor for everything that this is. Um, and I, that's why I think the gods so fiercely defend Midgard, defend this realm, is because the Jotuns are always trying to get in here. The Jotuns are always trying to invade. And then Midgard falls when the Jotun come at Ragnarok. So the walls fall of Midgard um, because some things are always trying to contain this realm, are always trying to capture it. Um, and, you know, and that's why I think there is conflict here is because it is so perfect. It is so beautiful. So while yes, there is horrible things here. Yes, there is death. There is, um, you know, theft and murder uh, and, and atrocities committed around the world. I think there's always something to balance it out. Now, this might be going more towards a Buddhist philosophy uh, on, you know, yin and yang. Uh, but truly, I mean, Midgard, the middle realm, um, you know, here where we exist, to me, it all just comes together. All the world cultures have kind of seen that, yes, life kind of sucks sometimes, but also it's really good. Um, you know, it's almost a proving ground. And so, you know, a lot of times I think we, we get into this mindset of why do the gods have any interest in us? And I think it's because we're here in Midgard, because we're the beings that inhabit here. This is our home. Um, and we have an important vital role to play uh, in the universe. We have an important vital role to play uh, within the realms, within the cosmology, within the spirituality, um, without this realm, the gods could not exist. The gods could not have their power. Uh, the Jotun could not exist because the Jotun seek to achieve this power. Um, so that's kind of how I see Midgard, um, is living here is such a joy and such a blessing because we really don't know what's going to happen uh, when we die. You know, all we know is that we're not here anymore. We go somewhere else. Um, and so what makes Midgard so great? we're not going to have access to anymore. And I think that's one of the big differences between Christianity and paganism, specifically Norse paganism, is Christianity is preparing you for the afterlife. Norse paganism is telling you to live right now and enjoy Midgard. Um, just like that Havon quote, it is better to be alive because you can only enjoy life's pleasures, life's goodness while you're alive. You can only enjoy beautiful views like this while you're alive. Um, and so I think that is a very powerful thing to move us forward because honestly, the world is a crazy place right now and it's out of balance, or at least it is being perceived as out of balance. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of us are thrown off by that. A lot of us are, you know, just really worried about the state of the world, um, but there is still good. There really is, there is still beauty. So yes, Midgard to me is the keystone, is the center point, um, is the, the anchor that holds this, all of this together. Um, and I think you can even see that within the shamanic practices as well. Of course, I have to bring this in here. Um, you have the middle realm, Midgard, the middle realm. So it again, just makes sense. Um, and for the upper realm and the lower realm to exist, they must have us, they must have Midgard and the middle realm to exist as well. So if the gods wish to exist um, and the primordial beings and our ancestors, we are all held together by by this place that we live in, which is what makes it so special. Um, and I think we maybe have lost sight of that specialness a little bit. And I, you know, and I think this is why we see a lot of people moving away from religion, but why we also see so many people coming back is because we realize that this place is very, very special. And I know it can be very hard at times to detect that if you're in the cornfields of Iowa or Indiana or Ohio, like the place I grew up in. Uh, but truly, you know, coming to a place like this, I think, you know, it reminds me of how magical, how beautiful, um, and how special Midgard really is and how much we should cherish it uh, and how much we should fight to defend it and fight for the idea that is balance and understanding that there has to be life and death. There has to be sadness and, and happiness and coexisting with one another. Uh, the world will never be one extreme or the other extreme. It will have all extremes because that is the idea of Midgard. That's what Midgard is, is all everything coming together in balance. Uh, I hope that makes sense. I mean, maybe I'm just rambling on. Maybe this is the ramblings of a mad pagan, uh, you know, just thinking about the nature of the universe. But, you know, coming to places like this um, and really thinking and reflecting on the nature of what Midgard stands for, this is how I see it. But I'm going to stop rambling about this now. I have one more thing, one more alternative theory I want to share with you uh, that I think makes sense. Uh, so let's head down to the lake over here and discuss that. And this wind just does not want to stop. Why is the world so beautiful and why does it have to be so windy? All right, so here at the end of the video, I'm actually recording in the lake because it's quite refreshing and I love the Alps seas because they are just 
it's so clear and it's so beautiful. So a perfect place to end this video um, with my last kind of crazy theory. And I, I really hope I've made it clear. None of this is like 100% truth. These are just crazy theories, thoughts I've had, and I want your opinion on, and I want to just enrich your mind a little bit. Um, and so this is something I've been kind of contemplating for a while. Um, so especially in the case of Midgard, and the stories told by the ancestors and the stories that we're hearing now, they had a very limited worldview. Yes, they noticed things, and yes, some things may have commonalities, uh, such as the shield of Sfiol, the invisible shield that protects Midgard from the sun. Kind of sounds like the atmosphere. But, you know, again, I don't think they actually knew the atmosphere existed. And then maybe you dive into the ancient aliens thing. Maybe there's ancient aliens that told them things. But for the most part, and, and rooted history, they had a limited worldview. So let's say um, these legends, these myths, being formed here in Germany, in Bavaria, around the Alps. And so people telling stories about the gods, about the ancients, um, about other beings, telling them around here. And so their understanding of having the Alps here, having a protective wall around them um, that was created almost that looks like it was created from a giant. Emir's eyelashes right here, Emir's teeth protecting them. Because what's south of here? South is people that constantly tried to invade early Germania, early Bavaria. I mean, the Romans were constantly, and the Romans and other people from the south were literally coming over the mountains to invade. So the mountains provided some form of protection. So the Alps were literal protection, uh, literal protection from armies because it's hard to reverse them, especially before, you know, formal roads were built. Uh, and so to the literal mindset of someone in Bronze Age Germany is that these were a wall, they were an enclosure. And so if the you know, idea of Midgard was kind of birthed in an area like this, I can see why they could see Midgard, their world, being protected by something that looked like it was formed by a giant um, that protected them from foreign invaders. Um, I mean, literally, I've been on the other side of the Alps now. I've been in Greece, uh, and it's very dry. It's a much different climate. And so the climate here is so much different and more agrarian, more for farming. Um, and so constantly things were trying to come in to steal the wealth of the world on the other side. So maybe Midgard in general um, comes from the idea of, of Germany, of, you know, the central Europe. Um, I don't know. I'm just presenting this. And maybe if it does come from Norway, Norway has tons of mountains as well that provide protection, um, you know, protection from the elements at times, but also protection from invaders. Um, so I think maybe, I, what I'm really just trying to say is Midgard could just have literally represented protection that the mountains provide the people that created this mythology, that created these stories. Um, and it, this is something I've been exploring for a while now, is this concept of maybe we look too big on the idea of the gods. Maybe it's a little bit more centralized. Maybe it's a little bit more local uh, in the folklore and the mythology. Um, I mean, if I was sitting here in this very lake, 2,000 years ago contemplating the nature of the universe and the gods and what protects us um, and I'm looking at this massive mountain in the background Maybe I am seeing it as a protector as something that protects me again I don't know just a theory I wanted to share with you and I really hope you've enjoyed this video Hope you've enjoyed this hike um, this view. I know I have and I've enjoyed sharing it with all of you uh, And I hope you've enjoyed this conversation as always, let me know down below what you thought or what you thought of my theories. Uh, I want to hear, I want the conversation. I've been loving the conversation around these videos. Um, it, I love hearing people's theories because that is one of my favorite parts of gatherings is sitting across the fire from somebody that has a different opinion than you and learning from it. What a concept in this modern world to actually learn from someone else's alternative opinion than yourself. <laughs> that was my jab at modern society for the day. Uh, but truly, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, and until the haul, skull. And just to prove to you here that I actually am in the lake at the end of this video, look at that. Yeah, filming in the lake. You know, just casually filming in a lake in the Alps. Pretty amazing. Thank you again for joining me for this video. I, I honestly, so thankful for this journey. Thank you all for watching this content. Thank you all so much uh, for everything that you do for this channel. Uh, and I, I really hope I'm able to capture the beauty of these places. Uh, and all these people over here, over somewhere, over here, the names going by, you guys are awesome. Thank you all. And to the 40% of people that have made it to the end, you're even awesome, more awesome too. So. I really can't stop talking because I don't want to stop filming here. All right, into the video. It's over. It's over.